Hey guys, welcome back to Angry Mac Adventures. Now if you're following the build, you know that we've started the engine and we've got ourselves some hydraulic steering. So, in this episode, we start installing all the accessories. It's a pretty exciting episode, this one. Uh, we install the VHF, we install the glove box, um, we install all the switch panel, and we just start wiring up all the 12 volt setup, really. So, stay tuned, hope you learn a thing or two, and uh, we'll roll on the footage. Now, what I'm thinking of doing with the power is running these, I'm pretty sure they're called bus, bus ports or bus terminals, something like that. This is what I'm gonna be doing uh, to the back of the dash, which is going to be powering all my 12 volt system. So I've got a main cable coming from the accessories battery through a fuse uh, to the lug here, and then from this lug, we're going to be then powering up the switch just like so, and all the 12 volt system. And it will be also the same for the negative terminal as well. Alrighty, so I just finished the heat shrink for the main terminal that comes off the switchboard. So that switchboard there is just a six panel switchboard and that's just gonna run the basics like my navigation lights, uh, cabin lights, VHF, and bits and pieces around the boat that's needed on a switch. Well, it's been a couple of days since we've installed the VHF and uh, the glove box and a few bits and pieces in the back of the dash. But as I was saying, I was waiting for a package to arrive and it finally has, so what I've got here is all the new gauges that are going to be installed in the dash. So I've got a fuel gauge, I've got the volts gauge, and I've got a trim gauge as well, which I'll be installing. So I'm just going to mock everything up, get it all sitting in the dash, and then I'm going to work out how to run my wiring. Now, I know I'm going to get a few keyboard warriors saying that it's probably not the best way to go about things, but there's plenty of ways to skin a cat. So this is my way of wiring everything up and making it as neat as I can in the back of the dash. Be sure to leave a comment below if you think there is something that can be changed or can be done or can be worked on. So what else is getting installed in the back of the dash is my stereo assistant and I've gone with the wet sounds. So something that I've got to install in the back of the dash is the amplifier and of course the RGB music controller which controls all the lights uh, on the speakers which is going to be pretty cool at night time. So that's what we're installing. All right, so this is what she's looking like at the back. A part of these new gauges, you just screw that little fitting on and it just makes them sit there nice and securely. So uh, I'll hook those up a little bit later, but all the action is here at the moment. So this is where I'm gonna be running all my positive and all my negative. I'm gonna be having uh, covers on these as well. This is probably the best way I'm gonna go about it to make everything nice and neat. I'm just gonna work all the wires uh, through the old speaker hole and then I'll get all Corey on that and seal it all up, making it all look pretty. But two things I wanna install, and that is the music controller, and the amplifier. So, just open this up here. This is the amplifier that I'll be running. It's just the four channel, full range class D amplifier that wet sounds make. And I'll probably be installing that somewhere here. So it's easy to access. It still has plenty to breathe out of the way from the elements. Hopefully it doesn't get too much water here. 
So that's the plan anyway, try and get everything that I don't want water smashing on behind the dash, but also make it so it's not messy and nice and neat. So the amplifier is gonna be living in the back of the dash here. So this is the little compact amplifier that I'll be running. It's a little four channel amp. Uh, I've got two speakers that I'll be running, uh, one in each of the seat pillars, but I've got four here just in case I wanna run a sub one day or run extra speakers depending on how good they are. So I'll be running the amplifier four channel at the moment and I'm gonna be installing it on the back of the dash here. So somewhere around here and then I can just hook up the negative and the positive straight to the battery or straight to the terminals all my speaker wiring down through the old speaker hole and into the pillars so we'll install that there now these speakers are pretty fancy they run uh, like the red green blue LED lights in the middle of them and to run those you got to buy this little controller so uh, we've got to install that as well and that is just purely just a little amplifier looking thing so you can adjust I guess the the brightness and then it comes with a cool little fancy remote so you can uh, do hectic colors when you're partying up with everyone so I'm pretty happy with that mock-up now I just ran the controller on the side of the amplifier because I just got to run a positive and negative uh, just a single cable down to the bottom here and I still got enough room uh, for the knob here and then all the wiring that goes to the speakers. Oh, the dash is starting to come together now, which is pretty exciting. And there's one more thing we've got to install on the dash, and that is the Wet Sounds uh, MC2 head unit. So, what I was thinking of doing is installing it on the passenger side. There's a little area here just beside the glove box. So, just say uh, we are playing some music and stuff like that, and you want to charge your phone or it's Bluetooth. Uh, or you've got to plug it in through the AUX, you can just sit it on the glove box here. So it makes sense to put it over here. Uh, I was going to put it here, but I think it's just going to be a little bit too cluttered and uh, our passenger can sort out the music, the party. So we're going to install it there. But just before I get on to that, I got a letter come through for Angry Mac Adventures. And if I open this up, oh, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Hunters and drifters. Well, if you guys haven't already, go on to YouTube and check out Hunters and Drifters. His name's Caden, and he produces some wicked content up in the northwest region of Western Australia. We are doing a collab in the next couple of weeks, which is pretty exciting. I'm flying up there in uh, the next week or so, and we're going to be doing some sick content together, and that includes some uh, spear fishing some fishing, mud crabbing, and a couple of things I've never done before, so I'm so stoked to see that. So thanks, Caden, for the stickers. Really appreciate it, man. And uh, when we get this boat finished, I'll be sure to slap on a sticker on the side of the boat, that's for sure. So thank you very much. All right, let's get on to the head unit. All righty, so this is the packaging for uh, the head unit that I'll be installing. It's the WSMC2. Alrighty, this is it here. Now, I've got a cutout to do, um, which I'm just gonna be using uh, one of these hole saws. Uh, it's just gonna be cutting out that there. And that is your unit. So it comes with a nice little cover, runs all the stereo system for the boat. So it's essentially a head unit, like a car. Approximately about here. So the head unit is now installed on the passenger side. Uh, in my opinion, it looks really good. So that's all nice and neat in there. And my idea was obviously this opens up. So when you're playing music and stuff like that, um, it's right there. So I can run from the back of the glove box, the USB cable from the head unit, which makes sense to me. Uh, so that works out really nice. It clears and yeah, it looks really good. So I am running some Cory on the lines and all the wiring just to make it all look nice and neat. Um, yeah, it's for a second layer of protection, but it also just neatens everything up in my opinion. So I've just done that to the hydraulic steering lines. 
and then we're just going to cable tie them up so we can start running our cable tie downs. So I've bought some of that. Also a little addition to the back of the dash is I've got myself a dual bus terminal as well that I've mounted here. So anything like the VHF or stereo that don't really need a switch, I can run straight to here. Alrighty, that is looking a hell of a lot better just with a bit of Cory and some of those cable mounts. So it's looking really neat actually. So I won't, I'm gonna hold off on this side for a sec because I still need to run all my speaker wire to the speakers and stuff like that. But I just wanna give a huge shout out to Dan from Total Mining and Marine in Wangara. Uh, he's helped me out a lot with this stereo system and uh, provided all the, the wiring for it. So thank you very much, really appreciate it. I'll put a link below to his website if you guys want anything. Um, the quality of this sound system is just amazing. So let's start finishing up the stereo wiring. Well guys, I think I'm going to stop the episode here. Uh, there is a lot of wiring still to go on the boat. We've got the bilge pump, we've got the cabin lights, we've got navigation lights. So we are just hit the top of the iceberg at the moment, but we're getting there. So everything on this side is slowly starting to look pretty good. We're just about to start the wiring for the amplifier. And we've also ran the wires to the seating pillars. So we'll be installing the speakers next episode. Well, that's it for another episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you are really enjoying this build. All right, guys, have a good one. See you in the next one.